Hello there, this is Rob Reinhold from Maverick Trading. I've been a professional trader now for 25 years, and we're going to jump into what I think is one of the hardest and trickiest trades out there. So let's talk about this leveraged ETF, this UVXY that we're going to be discussing here. But before we jump into the UVXY, we've got to go over what an ETF is so everybody understands what we're talking about. Whenever you hear the term the stock market, that really doesn't mean anything. Look, there's several different exchanges where stocks are bought and sold on a daily basis and they go up and down. There's really no way to say, hey, how are all the stocks doing? And so they created these things called indexes that you could actually track what the market was doing, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Standard & Poor's 500, the Russell 2000. And they created these as a way for someone to look at this number and say, oh, the market went up today, the market went down today, but it was just a collection of those 500 stocks that they put in there. In 1993, a firm called State Street created the first exchange traded fund called the SPY or as was called the Spiders. This was developed to deliver the same return as the S&P 500 index. The great thing about these is that it was a stock. It wasn't a mutual fund. It wasn't indexed. It could be directly bought and sold like a stock at any time at a really cheap price. This was a great alternative to mutual funds. Before ETFs, if you wanted to get the same return as the market, you had to pay a company probably somewhere around a half or 1% to run the money to try to get you the same return. Now it's as easy as just buying SPY. And these have options, which is awesome. We're an options trading firm at Maverick, so we absolutely love options on these ETFs. So to discuss the UVXY, we have to talk about what is volatility. Now, volatility is simply a name for the expected range of the market, of prices. There are some periods of time where prices don't move all that much, and that would be called low volatility. And there are times when the price moves a lot, that's called high volatility. Measuring volatility is the attempt of the markets to determine what is the future range of market prices going to be. Now, again, there is no directional component to volatility. Volatility, it doesn't matter. It's simply about the expected range of the markets. Now, look, markets tend to have a wider range when markets are going down. And so, yes, there is typically more volatility in bear markets than bull markets, but volatility has no directional component. The best way to talk about what is volatility and how is it measured is to do a sports betting analogy. Now, this is something a lot of people are familiar with, and this finally clicks to people and says, oh, I get it now. In any sports game, there is what's called the over-under bet. Now, look, let's take this basketball game. Of course, everyone knows that there's going to be points scored. No one is doubting that these two teams are going to score a lot of points against each other. The question is, how many points? How many points are going to be scored in this game? Now, it is not a bet about who wins the game. It's a bet about how many points are scored. So what happens is the bookies, they go out, they run all these projections. They say, how much has one team scored in the past? How much is the other team? Does one team score more at home? How does the other team do away? And basically they build out what's called the line. And the line is, this is how many points the sports book think are going to be scored in this game. Now you can bet one of two ways. You can take the over, meaning you think they're going to score more points than the bookie expects. Or you could take the under, which means that you're going to bet that there are less points than the bookies expect. So let's take an example of this here. Super Bowl 50, the Broncos were playing the Carolina Panthers. And let's say that the bookies went out, they looked at all the usual things. They look at how many points each team score. They're playing in a dome. So do they score more teams playing at a dome? They basically look at everything they possibly can. And they come to the conclusion that there's going to be 43 points scored in this game. Remember, this is not about who wins. This is about how many points are scored during the game. Now, that is the line, and that's where it starts. Now, this line is going to change based on things that happen. For example, let's say 10 days before the game, there's been a lot of people that have been betting on the Broncos by winning by a large amount. So what happens is the bookies are going to adjust that line. Because so many people are coming in and betting, they're going to move the line to reflect this new belief of the public that there's going to be more points scored. And then what happens is a couple of days later, they find out that the Broncos running back has an injury and will not be playing in the game. 
this player scored the majority of the points for the Broncos. And without this player playing, the odds makers say, hey, you know what? We don't think it's going to be 45 points anymore. We're going to move it all the way down to 39. What happens is this is always constantly being adjusted when new data comes in. That's exactly how volatility works in the market. The market is pricing the line. And then when it gets new data, it actually says, okay, we think it's going to be more volatile or less volatile. And the way they measure that is called the VIX, the volatility index. Now the VIX is a measure of market volatility. And what they're measuring is how many put options are being bought on the S&P 500 futures contract and how many call options are being bought on the S&P 500 index. When people become worried about a stock market crash, they go out and buy put options on the S&P 500. That is the fastest way for people to protect their portfolio by buying put options because put options go up in value if the S&P 500 goes down in value. And so the VIX measures how many people are buying put options on the SPX. And if a lot of people are buying put options on the SPX, it means that people are expecting there to be more volatility. If there's not a lot of put options being bought, then people are, are not expecting a lot of market volatility. And so when you make a play on volatility in the market, you have to trade something. And the something that we are going to be looking at trading is the volatility index. Now, if you want to be long volatility, that means that you believe you're betting the overbet. You think that the market volatility is going to be more than the market is expecting. If you take the under or you sell the VIX or you go short the VIX, you're saying that the market is overpricing future volatility and you believe the volatility index will be declining in value. A trader can either be long vol or short vol. And it's simply the same as the over under bet on a sports bet. So let's start off with the S&P 500 VIX short term futures index. The ticker symbol for this is SPVIXSTR. That's a big mouthful. But this is the index that we're going to be talking about because this is the index that the UVXY is attempting to follow. Now, what the S&P VIX short-term futures index does, it takes the next two futures contracts, the first month and the second month, and they basically roll those into one contract. And this contract will tell you what is the short-term futures outlook on market volatility. You cannot trade an index. An index is not something that can be traded. So we need to find something that we can actually trade against this index, which is why they create ETFs. So let's take this index, the SPVIX STR, and let's look at something we can trade against it. Now we're gonna take a little bit of a multiplier. This is 1.5X, and that's going to give us the ticker symbol UVXY. So the UVXY, is the ETF that is going to follow the SPVIX STR times 1.5. So that is what this ETF is attempting. Now, before we jump into it, this is technically an ETN. An ETF, exchange traded fund, will actually own stocks. Because this isn't owning any stocks, this is not owning anything but derivatives contracts, this is called an exchange traded note. Not that big of a deal, but I just wanted you to understand if you ever came across the term ETN, it's a little bit different because it doesn't own directly any stocks. Now we need to talk about this UVXY because it used to be a 3X ETF. It used to be the S&P VIX STR times three. However, back in 2008, the VIX jumped 100% in one day. Now think about that. If it gives the times three return, times 100%, that wipes out some ETFs, and that's exactly what happened. Now this is the short ETF, the SVXY, and this is what happened in 2018. We had a huge spike in market volatility. This ETF lost 95% of its value, and it actually was a huge event in the market, wiped out a lot of funds, wiped out a lot of traders, and of course, there was lawsuits afterwards, so after all this happened, ProShares came out and said, hey, you know what, we're going to cut the exposure on this one to 1.5x. So this used to be 3x, it is now 1.5x. Let's take a look at the two trading against each other. So we've got the index on the left and we've got the UVXY 
on the right. And we'll just watch them trade, and you can see that they're going to be trading fairly close to each other. Now, ProShares, who runs the UVXY, they are attempting to get the same return times 1.5 as the SPVIX STR. That is their goal. And the way they do that, they use derivative contracts. Their goal is to try to get as close as they possibly can times 1.5 to this index. And you can see it tracks it fairly closely. It's pretty close to the same movement on the left and the right. Let's talk about how and when to trade UVXY safely. Now, in my opinion, this is the worst ETF created. That's my own personal opinion, but I'm going to be showing you why it's so bad. So let's talk about how you can trade UVXY. You can just trade it directly like a stock. It's an ETF, so you can trade it like a stock. We don't think it's a good trade. Now, look, I'm going to be spending a little bit of time here to show you why, but let's talk about what you're actually betting on. Because when you think about when you're buying the UVXY, you are buying a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. So in the end, you're not even really buying what it is you want to buy because you're like three derivatives in. I want to give you another sports analogy of what the buying the UVXY is similar to. So let's say that you have this idea in a sports bet that the Buffalo Bills will win the Super Bowl. Now look, I've been a lifelong Buffalo Bills fan. That has not been a popular place to be for most of my adult life and my life as a child. But now it's actually cool to be a Bills fan. So let's say they're going to win the Super Bowl. Now I want to put a bet that the Buffalo Bills will win the Super Bowl. But then I take a look at this derivative and say, well, well, a bet I can make is that an AFC East team is going to be winning the Super Bowl. And then I can also say, well, I also want to make a bet that an animal mascot, an NFL team with an animal mascot will win the Super Bowl. And then I can say, you know what? I think it's going to be a team in New York that's going to win the Super Bowl. And at the end of it all, the bet I place is that a team in New York will win the Super Bowl. Look at this. I'm not really making a bet on my original idea that the Buffalo Bills will win the Super Bowl. I've gone from derivative to derivative to derivative, and I've come up with this final bet that's not even the original bet I wanted to make. And that's what happens when you trade the UVXY. So let's take the UVXY. Your original premise is that, okay, market volatility is going to go up, and it's going to cause people to buy lots of put options on the S&P 500 futures contract. That's your premise. So the way we measure that is by the put-call ratio on the SPX. And the VIX, the VIX index measures this directly. But remember, we're not trading the VIX. We're trading the VIX futures, the SPVIX STR. But we're not even trading those because we're now trading the ProShares UVXY ETF that attempts to follow the VIX futures. Can you see it's the same thing? We are far away from our original premise. The trade we're actually making is not even what our original premise is. We are making a derivative of a derivative of a derivative trade, and that gets very complicated. I'm going to show you the volatility index, which again is one of the first derivatives, and I'm gonna show you how it trades compared to the UVXY. On the left, we have the volatility index directly, and on the right, we have the UVXY. I want you to watch how differently they trade. I want you to see that when the VIX spikes up and makes a new high, the UVXY doesn't. And then when the VIX comes down, you can see the UVXY has broken through support and gone about 20% lower the entire time. The VIX is still where it was when we started. Take a look at the UVXY, falling, 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 falling. You are not trading the same thing. It's similar, it's kind of close to it, but you are not getting the same price action whatsoever. So if you think that by buying UVXY, you are trading the VIX, you are several, several doors away from what you think you're trading. And in fact, let me show you just some numbers. This right here are monthly returns for the last 12 months of the UVXY. So this is the ETF. The UVXY went up 22.5% in September. 
If we take a look at what the VIX did in September, the VIX went up 23.71%. Now remember, this is times 1.5. If the volatility index went up 23%, shouldn't the UVXY have gone up about 35%? It didn't. Why? Because you're not really tracking it. Take a look at the next month. The next month, the VIX went up 11%. So if you think, okay, well, the UVXY will go up 1.5, it didn't. It only went up 1%. You're not even trading the volatility index. And then take a look at just some of these. They are just ugly. In April of 2022, the VIX went up 62%. The UVXY only went up 35%. So you took 1.5% of the risk and only got half of the return. This is what's called the ETF differential. And we've focused on this differential through all of our ETF series videos that we've done here. And this one by far is the worst. This one is so bad. I mean, take a look. The differential is what it should have made versus what it actually made. In September of 22, the VIX went 23%. The UVXY should have gone up another 25%, but it didn't. Everything in red means this is what you underperformed. Take a look at November of 2021. There was a 109% underperformance. So this is why we just do not like the UVXY whatsoever because you're not even really trading the VIX. You're not really trading volatility. It's this totally separate derivative of derivatives of derivatives. They also have higher fees. The UVXY has a 0.95% fee. Every time you click a button, you're going to be paying a portion of this yearly fee. And there's really no options benefit whatsoever. Because again, the options market is smart. It knows the UVXY has a multiplier in it. So it will just simply adjust the options prices to match that. So again, we do not like the UVXY at all for trading. We just don't like it. It's a terrible vehicle because you're not really even trading volatility. We don't like it for options trading either. There's no reason at all to trade options on the UVXY when you can simply just trade options on the VIX index. Now you're just trading a derivative. That's it. You're just trading a derivative, not a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. So all options trading should be done on the VIX index only. Don't trade it on the VXX, don't trade it on the UVXY, any of the levered VIX futures contracts, avoid those whatsoever because the differentials are really bad. Again, we don't like them for options trading. And then hedging. I wish I could make a case that, okay, the UVXY is good for hedging. Now, we've talked about these in our other ETF series about how to use these as a hedge. So if you are long $100,000 worth of S&P stocks, you could buy 33,000 of the 3X inverse S&P 500 ETF. And you basically will hedge out your portfolio because when one goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. You're hedged out. With the UVXY, I can't even make that case because what? how do I possibly hedge this? So I think, okay, the market's going down 10%. Well, what does that mean is going to happen to volatility? What if volatility has already priced in a 10% market move down? You could go long volatility and volatility wouldn't go anywhere because future expectations are right where they are. Your portfolio loses 10%. You didn't hedge out anything. It's a very, very difficult hedge. So if you are going to use some sort of volatility product to hedge out, just go to the VIX contract. But frankly, we think you should hedge things directly. Hedge things directly. If you have you know, lots of technology stocks, use the Qs. Use something else to hedge this thing out because there's just no way to measure what volatility is going to do in the future. Let's talk about risk. Hopefully I've completely talked you out of trading UVXY, but let me give you one more reason why. This can move. Of all the ETFs, this is the most dangerous ETF out there. I told you that it lost the SVXY, lost 100% of its value basically in one day. If you have a significant portion of your portfolio in there, it's done, you're gone. You've lost it all in a day. These things have a lot of risk. And this was back when they were 3X. Now at 1.5X, they aren't as dangerous, but guess what? Volatility can still jump 100%. And 100% times 1.5, 
Again, when you look at the opposite side, that's like a 96, 97% loss, or maybe 92, somewhere around there. They are very, very risky. So I hope I've talked you out of trading the UVXY because it's not good for a day trade. It's not good for options trading, and it's not even good for hedging. It's just not good. If you're going to trade volatility, just trade options on the VIX. Go check our other videos on trading options on the VIX because that is the better trade. I personally don't like that trade because I think volatility is the most difficult thing to predict in the market. If you're going to trade volatility, trade the VIX directly. Thank you so much for joining me. I know this is kind of a downer session, but it's a very real session. Be very cautious with these volatility ETFs. Bye, everybody.